world. First off, we want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to the Most High God, in the name of Yahweh, in the name of Yahweh Shah, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, in the name of the Holy Spirit, which the Holy Spirit is with confidence and guidance, especially during these perilous times to come. I also want to give a double honor to our apostles and elders, the great millstone who teach and rule well with truth and sincerity, and peace and salutations to the elect. Whatever situation the brother is in, that could be you. And I'm saying that because that can be either good or bad. Because ultimately, everything is of you. How about Shimei Abishai? Like the scriptures say, Proverbs 20 and 24, man's going is of the Lord. So you can't basically judge a person because they're, they're in a low condition, especially if you can see that that person is trying. And you can't, you're not supposed to exalt or have respect a person if they're in a high position, as far as, and I'm talking about like financial wise or any type of situation wise because the Lord is the one that gives that to them and that could be a these things could be a test for each one of those brothers or you if you're in that situation because like the scriptures say 1 Corinthians 10 chapter 13 verse that the Lord knows what a person can bear first scripture I'm going to grab Ecclesiastes 3 I'm going to start at the top to everything there is a season and a, a time to every purpose under the, the heaven. So like I said, it could be your time to be in a low condition and it could be another, another brother's time to be in a so-called high position because we understand that in this kingdom, which I say this kingdom because ultimately it's a queendom, America, spiritually, Egypt, Sodom, Babylon, the great, being prosperous in this kingdom is not a great thing because like it says in Matthew the ninth chapter that it's hard for a rich, it's easy for a camel to go through the eye of a needle and a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven because if you have a lot of substance and this world, it's going to be hard for you to to put that stuff off because you're going to be thinking about all the things that you're going to be leaving behind. Like a lot of these people that so-called high up in this society, they're, going to, they, they're not going to want to lose their riches and they're not going to ultimately see the curses that we're put under because they feel like they're prospering in this kingdom. That's why it's a problem when these false prophets, especially the ones in Christian church, etc., preach about this prosperity doctrine. The Lord is coming to deliver the meek, the humble, the poor. And you don't technically have to be poor because like I said, the Lord can bless you with certain funds, but we got to understand that that's not the end all be all. Like the scriptures say, um, Proverbs the 30th chapter, in that start of the eighth verse that you're supposed to ask the Lord not to give you too much when you'll be prideful or too little to the point that you'll have to, you know, sin and steal. But the point of this lesson is that you got to be humble because the Lord can put you in a situation that's not favorable in your opinion. First Samuel chapter 2 and verse 6, it reads, The Lord killeth and make of alive, he bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. The Lord maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth low and lifteth up. He raiseth up the poor out of the dust and lift up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and he hath set the world upon them. So the Lord is the one that kill, make alive, wound, heal, etc. The Lord is the one that put these devils in power. And when I say these devils, because devil mean deceiver, that's the so-called white man who forefathers Esau, Edom, Job 9 and 24. The earth was given into the hands of the wicked. The Lord is the one who sets up any position that you're in in life, whether you be, like I said, in a workforce, whether you be even in a camp. The Lord is the one who set up certain men in his order on how he wants to do things. You just got to be humble enough to accept your position because ultimately there's nothing that you can do and you should be thankful for whatever position you receive because ultimately you could have not received this truth and there's many people that received this truth and fell out like the scriptures say many are called and few few are chosen and we pray humbly speaking that we're part of the elect the ones that's going to be delivered because it's going to be many that perish that not be saved and we know one of the biggest things that we're supposed to do, like the scriptures say, is love your neighbor as yourself. Especially us in the household of faith, the ones that's the temple, that's the temple of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Because there's plenty 
people that's out here believe that they're teaching this truth, but they're not. Ecclesiastes or Sirach chapter 11 and verse starting verse 14, it reads, Prosperity and adversity, life and death, poverty and riches come of the Lord. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the law are of the Lord. Love, love and the way of good works are from him. Everything is from the Lord. Poverty, riches, etc. Whether you got a job, whether you didn't receive a job. Whether you in a poor state, like I stated earlier, or in a rich state. But like I said, we got to understand that this is a body being raised up. So all parts of the body doesn't work the same. I mean, but it works together, but every part, every part of the body has their different task or their job on how they're going to help out the body. Some people have a bigger portion than others. But like I said, 1 Corinthians 10, chapter 13, verse, that the Lord knows what you can bear. 1 John chapter 2, and I'm going to start at verse 7. It reads, Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment which ye have from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which ye have heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past and the true light now shineth. He that said he is in light and hateth his brother is in darkness even unto now. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is not occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness and walketh in darkness and knoweth not whether he goeth, because that darkness hath blinded his eyes. So, yeah, you can't hate your brother and be in this truth because ultimately you hating your brother is you hating Yahweh Shai because as we know we don't have a physical temple it's a spiritual temple being built up so if this is the body of Yahweh Shai hating and fighting against your brother it's like ultimately a, a, a disease in the body is it's, it's fighting again the body is fighting against each, itself so we got to understand and we got to sometimes help each other out because this is a fight like the scripture say through much tribulation shall we enter into the kingdom of heaven it's not going to be an easy walk but of course we're supposed to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling but sometimes we're going to have to help each other out um, Galatians chapter 6 and I'm going to start at the top it reads brethren if a man be overtaken in a fault ye which are spiritual restore such an one in the spirit of meekness considering thyself lest thou also be tempted because yeah, that's why it's best that you seek counsel with a godly man one that's spiritual because a person in this world like a two third is going to lead you more so to a carnal aspect on how to handle things you got to it's best that you speak to somebody that's receiving this wisdom and knowledge that's going to be stability of our time as the scripture is written in Isaiah 33 and 6 because most people in this world don't know what's pleasing in the sight of Yahweh Shai. like the scripture say Isaiah 55 and 8 the Lord said his thoughts are not your thoughts and a lot of people go off that I think and feel spirit or they go off of what they heard the men of the Lord are going off of what they learned and like the Lord said, he set up he set up pastors according to his heart that's going to feed you with knowledge. But as we know, we're in this, this wicked flesh, so sometimes we may go off or the flesh is going to, the, the mind is going to try to talk to you in a way to get you to lean onto a carnal aspect, a, a, a fleshly aspect, and that's what you're supposed to be trying to avoid. You're supposed to be leaning more so to the spirit. But I'm going to continue on. Bear ye one another's burden and so fulfill the law of Hamashiach. And like I said, certain, um, we're supposed to be working out our own salvation with fear and trembling, but it, at some times it's a burden that's so heavy that a brother may need help with. So we're supposed to help each other during certain situations because certain burdens, like I said, it's, it's too heavy for a brother. For if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. 
but let every man prove his own work and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another for every man should bear his own burden so like i said certain burdens that you can bear on your own but when it comes down to that that heavy crushing burden you're gonna have to help your brother Because of us in the truth, for the most part, we're supposed to be wanting to see each other make it. But we understand this is the condition of the battles that everybody is not going to make it, especially in this in this world. That includes some of your loved ones, some of your friends, etc. So you got to be humble and thankful that you received this truth, and pray that the Lord keep the spirit on you to endure to the end. John chapter 14 and verse 15, it reads, If you love me, keep my commandments. That's Yahweh Shah speaking. And I'm going to jump over to 15 and verse 12. John 15 and verse 12, it reads, This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater love have no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. So the Lord is saying that you got to love one another as he loved us. So if a person, you got to look at your brother like that person has laid down their life for for you. And you got to continue to have the faith and believe that if that brother is not right, the Lord is going to eventually reveal that. But as of right now, while that brother is still fighting, alongside you then you gotta you should be like I said looking at that brother as if he's Yahweh Shai because like I stated earlier this is a spiritual temple we don't have a physical temple John chapter 21 and verse 15 it reads so when they had dined Yahweh Shai said unto Simon Peter Simon son of Jonas lovest thou me more than these he said unto him yeah Lord thou knowest that I love thee he said unto him, feed my lambs. He said to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He said unto him, yeah, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, feed my sheep. He said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him, a third, the third time, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Yahweh Shah said to him, feed my sheep. And that's one of the things, that we, ways that we show that we love Yahweh Shah. By feeding the lambs. Because, like I stated earlier, this wisdom and knowledge that is written in Isaiah 33 and 60 will be the stability of our time and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. And us feeding the lambs is us teaching the people our people on what they need to do for salvation. That's why we say here, GMS, Great Millstone, that we had 100% truth. The things that you need to be saved in the, on these times, of course, we know in part, so we prophesy in part, but the things that the Lord has gave to the men, starting from our elders and apostles, Great Millstone on down to the men that teach the same doctrine, he gave us the, the knowledge to know what we have to do and what we're supposed to be doing to possibly receive salvation because, like I said, we got to be humble in this thing. Because Satan is like a roaring lion seeking about who he may devour. Luke 22 in verse 31 it reads and the lord said simon simon behold satan have desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat but i have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not and when thou art converted strengthen thy brother and that's one of the things we should be doing whether a person is in a certain situation it's best that you pray for that brother one of the things i like to do is pray that the lord gives the elect the strength to endure whatever situation that they may be going through. Because like I said, I know this is not going to be an easy walk. And I know that the Lord can allow Satan to tempt me. And I pray that brothers is praying for me to be able to have the strength as well to endure. 
but it's, I also continue to pray for myself as well. But I'm going to finish off in Matthew chapter 25. And I'm going to start at verse 34. It reads, Then shall the king say unto them on his right, Come ye blessed of my father, and heard the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. And that's talking about the elect. For I was hungered and ye gave me meat. And this is Jehovah Shah speaking. I was thirsty and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger and ye took me in. Naked and ye clothed me. I was sick and ye visited me. I was in prison and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered and fed thee or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily, which verily means truthfully, I say unto you, and as much as ye have done it unto one, one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Then shall he say also to them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. And that's talking about the ones, like I said, that hated their brother, that didn't help out the body. Basically, the non-believers, two-thirds of our people are the ones that's not going to receive salvation. They're going to have to be destroyed on this side and brought back through the loins of an individual that's delivered. The ones that actually had the faith and believed on Yahweh Barashim Yahweh The ones that was helping each other out through this fight of ours. For I was in hunger and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger and ye took me not in naked and ye clothed me not sick and in prison and ye visited me not. Then shall they also answer him saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hunger and of thirst or a stranger or naked or sick in the prison and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them saying, Verily I say unto you, and as much as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did not to me, and these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into to life eternal. Because like we tell our people that this is the, like I said, it's a spiritual temple. So people expecting you to physically, to actually see Yahweh Shah and say, oh, I'm going to help you physically right here in the flesh. No, this is spiritual. So when the Lord was crucified on the cross and he went up to the Father, basically he gave gifts to each brother. And that's what we're saying, that this is a spiritual temple. So like the, like the scriptures say, the kingdom of heaven is within you. And that's the body of believers of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh But two thirds of our people are outside of the temple with the heathen because ultimately this thing is not for the heathen and two thirds of our people are not going to receive it because that's the will of the heavenly father so that's why we pray constantly pray that the Lord give us the spirit to endure to the end especially when that hour of temptation come during the time of Jacob's trouble when all hell breaking loose the hour of temptation, which includes the mark of the beast, the RFID microchip, which is going to tempt a lot of people because they're going to be saying you can't buy or sell unless you have it. But the elect is going to have that spirit that's not going to bow the knee to the image of our own. Two thirds of our people are going to take it and be destroyed, or before it gets to that point, they're going to die death by pain because they're not going to believe on this word. But like I said, we got to keep in mind and be humble that it could have been us in those situations, whether it be being a two-third or it could have been us in the situation of being in, the, in this body and being in a low condition. But we got to understand that the things that we receive is of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh So whether a brother is in a situation 
that's let's say less financially stable than you are and you're in a better situation you got to understand that you could be in that situation but like the lord said you help out that person it's like you helping out him and that's what we got to keep in mind but that's all i got shalom